Welcome to this tutorial video of iNoise. This video gives a short overview of the iNoise graphical user interface. Looking at the user interface you see the menu options above, the file menu, edit, model, view, results, calculations, tools, windows and help menu. You see also the toolbars. You've got the toolbars above, at the left and underneath. You can position the toolbars anywhere you like. At the right hand side you see the sidebar with the list of selected items and the display options. When looking at the list of selected items, if you click on an item, it's also shown in this list. You can also multiple select items by dragging a window over them and then you see the full list of selected items. Underneath you see the message section. The toolbars can be configured with the view toolbar menu option. Here you can select all toolbars available. The main toolbar is always visible and that contains the main group. In this case there are four groups Cranco, Distribution Center, Warehouse and Wind Turbine. A group contains sources. You also see that it has an effect on the contours because now you see the contours of the selected group. The main group always contains all sources. A font selection including or excluding group reductions and the day, evening, night or LDAM period. Also changing here, you see that it's automatically changing your noise contours. Toolbars can be put anywhere. So in this case the item toolbar is put underneath, but you can also select the item toolbar to be somewhere else, on top for instance of the model. You also see that you cannot change anything. I can double click on items and I can show the attributes, but I cannot change any attribute. This, this is because the results are active. So you have to put off the results by selecting results, no result. And now you can see that you can add all type of items to your model. You've got area sources, emitting facades, emitting roof, line sources, moving source, point source, vertical area source, wind turbine, contour point, grid, receiver, vertical grid, barrier, building, foliage region, ground region, housing region, industrial site, height line, height point, div area, div line, div point, and the GPS point. I can also put it back underneath. While looking at the model, you see that some buildings are colored in red and some are in blue. This is because there is a thematic coloring active. If you double click on buildings, you can change all the thematic coloring that you like. Here you can also select or deselect to show certain items. Normally you look at the 2D view and you can switch on your contours by saying result contours and here you see your calculated contours. You can also show your model in 3D. So you go to view 3D and here you see your, your model in a 3D view with the wind turbine, the horizontal contours and also the vertical contours on these high-rise buildings. Now let's take off the noise contours by selecting the results, no results option. Let's also take off the thematic coloring by clicking on the default button for the buildings. So now the buildings are shown in their default color. And let's also take off the background map by clicking uh, and selecting the view background map option and deselecting the JPEG. So now you're looking at all the items in the model. Going back to the list of selected items, saying Ctrl A for instance would select all the items. The last part of the graphical user interface I would like to show you is the right mouse context menu. If you click on the right mouse button you see a menu with several options. Most of those options are depending on the selection or on the selected item. For instance if I select a building and I go to the right mouse menu you see that there are options of rotate, inserting points, remove points, to break the building, clipping, creating parallel items and simplify geometry. 
This concludes the video for the graphical user interface. Thank you for your attention.